so this um, on the screen at the moment is the collaborative workflow that we're trying to establish really within a collaborative project. So this is a repository that we're going to work on. We're going to give people access to it. So we're going to make them uh, with right access or maintainers or admin access um, to that actual repository as collaborators. So um, we'll do that when they come and work for us, when they join our teams, when they contact us so that we can see the work that they're doing. So to get our collaborative workflow going, we're going to discuss some ideas and um, what we're going to do on GitHub is open the issue so that we can have conversations um, online uh, asynchronously with our team. Um, when we have started to do a bit of work, so we uh, say this is, I don't know, a new paper that we want to write or something like that, we're going to start doing some work. So where, where we might we do that? So you can do it directly on GitHub. So you could open a branch straight away and start doing the work on there. OK, you could do that. Um, but you could also work um, on another online document. So you could work in a Google Doc or HackMD. You can also write in R Studio. You could use other write, online writing things like um, some LaTeX um, software like uh, Overleaf or something like that. And you can actually link those into your issue. So you can actually directly put the Google Doc link into the issue. So that means that anyone going into that issue could see the work, they could access the work, they would be able to edit it or something like that. Um, and um, they can bring the work into um, the repository at some point when you want to bring it in. So you're trying to make the work visible. So essentially you're, you can work outside of GitHub if you want to, but you've got to make it visible within GitHub to make it collaborative. That's kind of the idea of that. So when, when you're ready to bring it into the repository, you're going to create a branch. Um, it might not be the finished bit, bit of work because you might want to, at a very early stage, start working with people in GitHub. So you would then open your branch very early. You would um, make sure you link in in the branch people who you want to work with because you can in the pool, in the in the pull request, so you start a branch, you maybe do a little bit of work, start the pull request before you have finished. You can actually, in the pull request, you can assign people to that particular pull request. And that, whenever you update the pull request, um, those people that are assigned get an email about what updates have happened. So that's actually a really good thing if you're working very actively on a particular um, bit of work with a group of people. It can also be really annoying as well. So my one tip is if you don't want to annoy people, so if you're not actively working with people, it's better just to have you yourself in the pull request until you're ready for people to see it or to collaborate with you. So then you can add people in as uh, reviewers or you can assign other people to that particular pull request. And then they don't get all these million emails um, from you at every single commit that you're making. So say you make in one day, you've made like 20 or 30 commits. They're getting 20 or 30 emails from you. So they won't be very happy unless they're actively working with you as well. Um, so um, again, you can add in other documents um, to pull requests. You can just put the links in into the comments in that conversation of the pull request. Um, you can also link in issues. And that's a really good idea is just to say, at the top of the pull request, um, this is linked to issue and all the issues have a number. So like number one or something, um, and it will directly link your pull request to the issue. So you can have a, a link between those two, those two sort of documents on GitHub. And then once you're ready, you get the final review, get to do some final edits and then get someone to approve it to merge it into the branch. So at all stages here, you're trying to record what you're doing in GitHub Sometimes, as I said, not all of the work goes on in GitHub. So you're trying to enable people to see that. So this, so Git, I really see GitHub as kind of a management tool, really. It's not always the place that you're actually doing the typing and all that kind of stuff. The final editing, yes, might be going in there if it's a document, but it's um it's about creating the collaboration. That's that's important. So we're going to have a go at doing some branching. And one of you is going to create a new repository. OK, so we learned to do that last time. So I put instructions into the HackMD document. 
but you can call it any name you like. I think I called it test repository, but you can name it anything. So once that one of you has done that and set that up, so I would make, so literally just start the repository because we're going to add, we're going to add some details in the documents that we've learned to add in. So the first thing to do um, once you've set it up is to go to the settings and you're going to go to collaborators and team. So this is in settings and this will bring you to um, this page. So we're in the collaborators um, and teams part of settings and you add people. So what this then enables you to do is this pop up box comes up and you're going to add it to and it will be the name of your repository and the GitHub username. So remember, we typed in our GitHub usernames into the other repository. So you should know everyone's GitHub usernames now. You're going to add them. So you just add one at a time. You put the so copy and paste it into there and select um, and then uh, you just press yes. I, I think for the one that you create, it won't ask you about access. Um, uh, it won't ask you about uh, levels of access because that usually happens at a if you're creating it from an organization account. But if it does um, ask you what type of access, just click on the one that says right, because that won't allow you to have everyone to have enough access to make changes in the, in the repository. So we're going up to settings. So we're making a new repository. We're going up to settings. We're going to collaborators and teams, add people, and then we're adding in everybody, um, everyone's name so that everybody can see that repository. Once we've done that, or one of you has done that, then each of you are going to make a new branch on the landing page and you're going to add a file and then you're going to do a pull request. And then each of you is going to review one of those pull requests. Okay. So once the repository has been made and you've got access, um, you're going to go to the landing page and press this main gray button and then name, name a branch press the create branch, and then you can make the change in, in that branch, okay? And it's the same as we've just done. You make the change. Um, it will say at the top on the gray button, the name of the branch that you've just created. And then, and then uh, you'll be able to make a change and then, um, and then you'll be able to do the pull request just the same way we did when we were in the forked, um, your forked repository. It's exactly the same. You go into the pull request, keep pressing create pull request put a um, put a title and then um, uh, save the pull request with the green button at the bottom okay now um who is going who is going to be the um so um so what we've um we've learned is um what uh, version control is and why we should be using it hopefully and we've learned about collaborative workflows so we've learned about using forking and how that um is is great but um that it removes you from the original repository so you're kind of one step away from it so it can be used to do work um separately and then merged into the, the original repository but also you can use forking to use someone else's repository as a template for work that you might want to make in your own repository so that would never be merged into the main uh, the original owner's repository um, and then branching, so branching in the main repository where you've got right access um, and you are a collaborator of that particular project or uh, with that person who owns the repository. Um, and that is much more transparent and uh, a better collaborative way of working if you want to work in collaboration with, uh, as a team, really. Um, it's best to do the branching rather than the forking. Um, and then pull requests is asking to bring the work into the main repository and merging is actually making that happen. And then the last word we learned was about issues, which is striking up conversations to begin collaborative workflows with a team or a person.